Hi everybody, I'm Ms. Renault. I am your scholarship coordinator here at Henry Wisewood High School, as well as one of the guidance counselors for students with last names P to Z, although here to help everybody when it pertains to scholarships. So I will go into about a 22 or 23 minute video here, and hopefully most of your questions will be answered that way. I just want you to know that I do believe that there's a scholarship for almost everyone, and going through this tutorial will help you discover ways that you can narrow down your search and save some time. I hope that you'll all be applying for scholarships often, that you'll start early, that you'll secure your references early, and that hopefully we and this video can help some money come your way. So good luck. So you're here probably because you figured out that scholarships are really important. When we're looking at going into post-secondary, we can estimate that our living expenses, living with parents or living on our own, are going to be quite a bit of money, as you can see here. Also, the estimated tuition, books, and academic supplies run up to $10,000 a year. And so often because you're not working, full-time anyways, and you're going to school, you could need some help with funding your post-secondary education. So if you want to look more at how much school will cost, this is an excellent website. I've posted it at the top of the page here, and I will put this on our website so you have access and you can copy and paste into your own browser. But this site's excellent for figuring out how much school may cost you, doing some budgeting worksheets, that sort of thing. Some of you may not know exactly what a scholarship is or the difference between a scholarship and a bursary. So honestly, the difference is, is most often financial needs. So Although financial need may be a stipulation in the criteria for particular scholarships, many of them are not based on financial need. However, when we go to look at what bursaries are, they are monetary grants that usually are based on financial need. And often you'll have to prove either by letter or support letter from an adult or using your parents' previous income tax return they will have income cutoffs for each family. So government student loans are something that many students will look at. And it's really important to note that family contribution is not expected for an Alberta student loan. So it's not based on your parental income. However, one thing to consider is that students are expected to contribute up to about $1,500 per year from the student themselves. So they are hoping that you will be working through the summer or through the year to put in a contribution for your Alberta student loan. There's many different types of scholarships and we're going to go through a few of them here. So all post-secondary institutions will offer scholarships for grade 12 students going into their first year of university. So you can check each of the institution's webpage for the most up-to-date listings of these scholarships. There will often be entrance scholarships that you may or may not have to apply for. Some of them are automatic. Many of them are based on grades. However, some are based on things like, are you living 100 kilometers or more away from home, for example? And, and others might be based on other criteria. So be checking the post-secondary websites for further information on that. Member scholarships have to do with usually do your you or your parents belong to certain clubs? Do you work for certain employers? Are you affiliated with any cultural organizations or religious affiliations or sports teams even? So there could be scholarships 
pertain to all of those places. There are many CBE and even Henry Wise work based scholarships. So educationmatters.ca is the organization that manages all of the Calgary Board of Education scholarships. So they're all at the city level. So students would be competing with others from across the city for those scholarships. And Henry Wise with specific scholarships, there are approximately six and those are excellent because the pool of applications is obviously much smaller than when we're looking at across the city um, for the Education Matters scholarships. The Henry Wisewood scholarships will be based just between you and your peers in grade 12 here at Henry Wisewood. Corporate scholarships are nationally or provincially based corporations. So We've got a few of them up here, and these can be really significant scholarships, sometimes up to fifty to $75,000. Very much worth your time checking out. And these are the types of scholarships that I do post about in our monthly scholarship listings, which I will talk about in a few minutes. Government scholarships. So all of you will qualify for the Alexander Rutherford Scholarship based on your grades in grade 10, 11, and 12. So up to $2,500 over the three grades. And again, we're looking for approximately a 75 to 80% average in five different subjects. And if you go to this website, it will actually get into details of what those subjects are. It's not every subject. You do have to use a combination of English and other core subjects plus options. To calculate what your average would be. One of the most important things I can mention to you today is that there are millions of scholarships out there and so in order to really weed out the scholarships that you qualify for or don't qualify for it'd be important to create a profile on these websites and that way scholarships that fit specifically with you and the profile that you've entered in they will be sent to your email address and so this is an excellent way to really narrow down your scholarship search so these are four of the ones that we really highly recommend you setting up a profile in it really doesn't take long at all to set up a profile and it will be well worth your time again because then you're not searching through many, many thousands of scholarships to figure out what you fit the criteria for. So obviously, if you're a girl who plays soccer, you're not going to be interested in a scholarship that is for a boy who plays football, for example. So every scholarship will have unique criteria and very much so you want to narrow it down. So I've listed two other websites to explore. And again, you can get those when we post this on the website. Here's an example of what you'll see when you go to the studentaid.alberta site. So very nice that they break down the scholarships into academic, athletic, citizenship, indigenous, language or technology. So that will really help you um, narrow down your search as well. Education Matters, again, that's the um, CBE organization that manages scholarships around the city. And on this site, there will also be the scholarships that are specific to Henry Wisewood. So you will apply through the Education Matters organization and they will help us select our candidates. So this is just an example, the Warriors Legacy Endowment Scholarship, where we have five awards one in each area of academics, athletics, fine arts, citizenship, and overcoming obstacles. All of the Education Matters scholarships, sorry, 95% of the Education Matters scholarships will have applications open in the springtime with a deadline in May, um, beginning of May or the end of May. So stay tuned 
there usually is a scholarship meeting, whether it's virtual or in person, through Education Matters in the spring. Here's another example of one of the Henry Wisewood specific scholarships on the Education Matters website. This one's open to grade 12s with an 80% average who have a lot of participation in school athletics. Again, application open in the spring with a deadline in May. So how do you find out more information? So again, to help you with weaving through the millions of scholarships available, we do have a scholarship page on our school web website. It is buried in there, so I've put instructions here for how you would find that page. As well, I post instructions every week in Wednesday Warrior about how you find this page. So you would go to the Henry Wisewood website, go to the Teaching and Learning tab, then Exams and Graduation, and then Scholarships. You will see resources such as the Scholarship Handbook. This PowerPoint video will be posted there. And then every month there's going to be monthly listings of some of the scholarships available. Again, because there's millions, we really only post significant ones that we think general students should be aware of. They, they often aren't very specific ones. They're ones that most students could apply for. And however, there are some specific ones on there. We do post them one month in advance. So for example, I'm getting ready to post November scholarships on October 1st. October and September were posted as of September 1st. So they are in the area, um, resources area under monthly listings. And you'll go in and you'll see a folder by month. Now, if you're wanting to really search ahead, you're looking six months ahead, maybe you find out that the Schulich Scholarship is due in January, for example, you could go to the January archives and, and start searching there. You will see most of the criteria and the dates will not significantly change. However, we can't guarantee that. So stay tuned usually to the website of the scholarship for the most up-to-date information on if criteria has changed and if dates have changed slightly. So parents get Wednesday Warrior sent home to them every week. We do have a student services D2L page that that is excellent, an excellent resource for scholarships as well as many other things post-secondary. Your homeroom D2L shell will also occasionally have information about scholarships. There's a daily bulletin that you have access to through our school website on the main page of the website. There's also bulletin boards outside of the guidance student services office. However, your most up-to-date information will be both on the school website and in the student services D2L shell. Some of you are here to find out just a little bit more of general information about scholarships. So I want to go through some myths and tips for you. So many students think, oh, well, a scholarship must mean that I am a highly academic student with all straight A's or 90% average. Not true. There's really a scholarship for everybody. You just have to search and find it. Some of them will have criteria for marks that are perhaps 75%. Some will have no mark criteria at all. So myth number two, it's a lot of work to apply. I will be honest that it can be, and sometimes I say that if you're serious about it, it is almost like a part-time job to get scholarships. However, what I will say is that if you do spend five or six hours writing essays for one particular scholarship, and you end up getting $100,000, well, it is well worth your money. Others, you might spend half an hour filling out some demographic, demographic information and short essays, and you might receive a few hundred dollars for that. So it's well worth your time. Please start early on your scholarship applications. 
That's why we do post them one month in advance. And please ask early if you're looking for references or if they are school nominated scholarships that require your counselor to be involved or again references from different teachers or community members. Please ask them at least two weeks in advance for any letters that you would require. Some students think they have absolutely nothing to talk about. What would I possibly say in an essay? Or how could I win out when there's a million or 300 or 20 even other kids applying? How will I possibly win? Well, you all have something to talk about. And what makes it interesting for each scholarship committee is hearing about things that are unique to you. So what do I write? Well, make sure you're reading the question and sticking very much to the theme. If you share anecdotes and personal stories, that will make you stand out to the scholarship committee. That's what's most interesting to us. We don't want to just see all of the right words. We don't want to only hear, for example, about your academics, unless it is a scholarship based only on that. We want to hear more about you. We want to hear about things that you're truly passionate about. So let your passion shine through. Here's an example of a really great paragraph. I'll let you read through it. We often like to see, well, what have you learned from it? And um, how, how does whatever you're doing inspire you? So those are great things to include in the essay. What not to write? Here's a great example. I'll let you spend a minute reading through it. There are so many students applying, I'll never get one. Well, it is true that sometimes certain scholarships will have many, many, many candidates from all across Canada. However, there are millions of dollars of unclaimed scholarship money every year. And so I honestly think there is a scholarship for every student that you need to search and find, or you need to fill out those profiles so that ones that fit the criteria you provide in your profile will get sent to you. Sometimes there's only one student who's applying. Sometimes there's a very small number. So don't let it hold you back thinking that it's so scary that so many are applying. So again, research, start early, and apply often. Here's some bonus tips, some things that Education Matters has suggested that when they're going through scholarship applications, they really look for many of these things. I hope at this point all of you have signed up for a MyPass account. If not, you can Google MyPass directly. You will have to sign in with your Alberta education number, which has actually been on every report card you've ever had since you were in kindergarten. But I know if you're like me at all, you probably remember your CBE password, but you don't remember the other number that's on all of those documents. So. If you need that number, you certainly can come down to the main office and ask about it. Um, you can also Google your Alberta education number. When you are signing up for MyPass, please make sure that you are signing up with a non-CBE email because you will want to use this account even after high school. And then please ensure that our main office here at the school does know what the other email address is that you're using so that they can sync with Alberta MyPass. Just wanted to show you an example of what's 
posted in our scholarship listings on the website and in the Student Services D2L shell. So for example, this is a significant scholarship that the deadline is coming up soon, October 13th. And so again, for the past month, we've, we've had this up and we hope that students are looking at this. So we usually try to list what the criteria is in very general terms. You'll also have to go to the website to very specifically see what you need to do for these applications. But we will, on the school website, give you a brief summary and let you know what the deadlines are and any details we can provide about the application process. So again, this scholarship is valued at up to $100,000 that you can use at over 25 universities across Canada based on character, service, leadership, and academic excellence. For this one, there's no longer school sponsorship as there used to be, so everybody can apply. You apply online and the deadline is October 13th. You can expect that there will be endorsements required or reference letters as well as transcripts, so you will need to submit those online and you'll have to give your references at least two weeks notice. So again, where can I go for more information? So absolutely, you can come in and talk to your guidance counselor. Your guidance counselor will want to make sure that you know how to access our school website or our student services D2L shell so that you can keep looking at more scholarship opportunities on your own. You can always come in and talk to me. I'm your scholarship coordinator here at Henry Wisewood. So I'm Ms. Renault and I'm also in the guidance office. Please stay tuned to the Henry Wisewood website, the Student Services D2L page, the Daily Bulletin, and the Weekly Wednesday Warrior sent home to parents, but also available on our website for all of you to look at as well. There will be some upcoming scholarship tutorials in a computer lab where if you do have specific questions about anything scholarship related, you could come meet with me in the computer lab and we can get right on and go into the web page or the D2L shell or the scholarship website and we can just work on that a little bit together. So again, stay tuned to all of our usual advertising spaces for an update of when those will be. And just to put in a little plug for some upcoming things this fall, remember that there will be post-secondary information sessions virtually during COVID, usually, although some universities are telling us that they do want to get out to the school when possible. So please be watching again all the usual advertising places for when those info sessions are happening. There will be an out of province virtual fair and an in Alberta post-secondary virtual fair this fall. So again, Wednesday Warrior, website, Daily Bulletin, Student Services D2L shell will have the most up-to-date information on dates and times for those events. Hi everyone, so I hope that helped answer many of your questions about scholarships. Remember that there are lots of people and websites to help you out if you have more questions. I wanted to let you know that as we talked about in the presentation, there will be some lunchtime and wise time scholarship tutorials in a computer lab through the month of October. So stay tuned to all of our usual advertising places and hopefully now you know where they are. So we have Wednesday Warrior, we have Student Bulletin, we have our website, we have our guidance or student services D2L shell, your homeroom D2L shells, and occasionally Instagram. And we will publicize in as many places as possible. So again, be watching for some tutorial sessions during the month of October. If you just want to pop by and ask some questions or have me go through some of the websites with you, really anything. So please stay tuned and I will see you soon. Thank you. Have a great day.